Now I see this idea floating around. I see it all over the place. The, the idea is that cryptocurrency is magic money for the poor. Now how do I see this? I see it first of all in all the projects, very high profile projects that are used to uh, feed feed people who are hungry. And uh, I think those are wonderful projects. I have nothing against them. They're highly admirable. How dare I say anything in, in, against those projects? Uh, really, I mean, honestly, they're wonderful. Uh, I think one is Eat BCH. There's another one that's been active for a long time in Florida. Um, I don't remember them all. There are quite a few and they're excellent and they're very praiseworthy. Uh, another example of this idea that crypto is magic money for the poor is when people say that uh, crypto is hope for the poor. Now, I could be mistaken here, but I think Humanic is one project that has this in their marketing materials. Now, how dare I say anything against Humanic? That's a very wonderful project where they are taking a, uh, an, an ERC-20 token they're giving it, uh, they're airdropping it to people in, I think, Uganda and Kenya uh, as a trial. They're also looking at India, I believe. And they're also attempting to connect uh, people in these extremely poor places, these in the extreme poor, with uh, first world, developing world corporations that can employ them to do things. So, uh, I like the Humanic Project. I, I look to them for a certain level of inspiration. But at the same time, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it's another project, but I'm pretty sure it's them, it has been, been pitched as hope for the poor. Uh, another project that comes to mind is uh, David Hayes' idea to airdrop a certain amount of, uh, I think it was $4 of cryptocurrency to Venezuelan refugees in Cúcuta, Colombia. Um, and uh, I like David. I like his, his, uh, I like his idea. I think it's a very ambitious, admirable idea. How dare I say anything against it? Um, but at the same time, also, um, you know, I've talked to David a lot about his idea. And basically, it just amounts to giving people money. That's really it. Uh, let's see. There's another um, idea along these lines that crypto is uh, magic internet money for the poor. I believe it was, I saw something about the city of Seoul, South Korea, planning to create a cryptocurrency to use to distribute their uh, welfare programs. Another city uh, funding something. It was a very, very vague piece of news and I could be wrong. Uh, and of course, there are other uh, there are basic income uh, projects on blockchains. There's the whole fair coin uh, thing, uh, which uh, Enric Duran is behind. Uh, gentleman, I've corresponded with a lot. I have many nice things to say about him. But um, the bottom line is, cryptocurrency is not magic internet money to uh, drop to the poor. When there is uh, an opportunity, a solid opportunity to airdrop new crypto to the poor, it has to be justified. It can't just be a Robin Hood move. It has to be justified in terms of value that it brings to the cryptocurrency community. There has to be a crypto economy being developed around that money so that when it's dropped, it's just not immediately cashed out for fiat so that it's not just a windfall that's being used to fund consumption, to buy an extra loaf of bread or um, you know, a fish to feed somebody for one day. We have to build cryptocurrency ecosystems around these kinds of airdrops to be sure that money keeps circulating so that everybody understands how cryptocurrency works so that they can build it into their own plans, so they can build businesses around it, so that it continues to circulate indefinitely from consumers to merchants to bigger merchants, back and forth and all around through the economy, so that we are, and, and the, 
the uh, and I think this is primarily a mindset shift because a lot of people look at the poor and they say oh these poor people we must help them well yes there is a subset of the poor the extreme poor in for example rural Africa India other places like that who are are in desperate need but there is another set of the poor, I would say a larger set, I would call them the moderate poor, who are getting along all right. Uh, they don't live at first world standards, but you know what, they're not objects of pity. They are not uh, pathetic human beings and we are not gods coming down and, and dropping manna from heaven on them. You can't approach it like that. They are potential partners. Many of them are experts in entrepreneurialism, in the informal economy. They can be our partners. And we need to treat them like that. So, um, so once again, the bottom line is crypto is not magic internet money for the poor. We are not all philanthropists with largesses that should be dumped on the nearest available poor people. We are people with a business plan, with a societal, cultural, political plan, and we need to bring in the right sectors of the world, I would say the informal economy, the global informal economy, and the moderate poor, treat them as partners, serve them, figure out how can we can make crypto work for them in a humble way without trying to enforce our own ideas on them. And then we can kill two birds with one stone. We can help the poor, but we can do it in a sustainable way that grows the crypto economy and helps us as well.